Joining us now is Frank Raddis, uh, one of my dear friends in our industry. Welcome, Frank, to the show. How are you? I'm uh, very hot, I got to say, here in the United Kingdom today in London, it was 102 degrees. Unbelievable. Wow. Did that break a record of some sort? I know that you're a historian of nature and a journalist. So uh, what's, what's this, what do you say on that one? Well, it, it was absolutely the hottest day uh, in history in London. And, uh, you know, the thing about living in the UK, it's never like that. Uh, and so very few places that aren't uh, public uh, facilities have air conditioning. So, you know, I have a brand new uh, flat that I just moved into about three weeks ago. It's completely refurbished from top to bottom. No air conditioning. All, oh. And it was it was fine. It's just awful. Listen, I, I actually want to step, step step back for one second and say congratulate you for oh. uh, the, the studio and all the great things that you've been doing. I've been following what you're up to. You know, <clears throat> you and I have known each other for years. I've always been a fan of yours. And what you're doing now is spectacular. Congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. And when I think I first met you, I actually was working in this same building, Frank, that's now my studio. I was working at WLNY TV uh, back in 1997. Um, you were very involved with Promax back then. Um, and, you know, we met and it's been a long, long journey um, and a joyful one for me knowing you. And, I, and I'm grateful for all of the encouragement you've given me over the years, all of the access, you know, because of you, sometimes I'd be down at NatBee and, you know, everybody knows you, Frank, and you'd be like, oh yeah, you want to give her an interview? And I'm like, oh, that to me is golden to have that access, to well, have someone like you support mm -hmm. me. So thank you for that. No, well, you're, you're quite welcome. Uh, you deserve it. I, I think one of the great things about that story is that you are now the owner of the building that you used to work in for somebody else. <laughs> that is true. It's the same grid, but now it's got my name on the door. Ironic. So, <laughs> ironic. <laughs> yes, ironic, ironic to say the least. So today we're also talking about the fact that you've had a wonderful journey. You've worked with all of the big, big names over the years. You know, what was that like uh, working, you know, for those big uh, networks that have three letters in their name? I had, after 17 years at ABC, I, I had an opportunity to work with just about everybody that was there. Uh, from uh, Ted Koppel to uh, Peter Jennings and uh, Barbara Walters, and and it was it was a, it was a great time to be in the news business. Then uh, uh, I switched from there to NBC, uh, where I spent another uh, another fifteen or sixteen years. It looks like I froze on you. Uh, nope, you're doing great. Going on. I have brand you're doing new. Fine. You're I have doing brand fine. new internet here. It's no problem. So I spent you another 15 years at NBC, and um, uh, I obviously uh, had a chance during 15 years of NBC to work with everyone that came through NBC during those 15 years. And my tenure in the uh, uh, working for the three networks, uh, and I worked at CBS too, but not as not as long as I did at NBC and ABC. Working at the three networks kind of came to an end about seven years ago. And um, I moved to London, formed my own company. And as you mentioned, I had some involvement with Promax. I ended up becoming a board member of Promax UK and I became the chairman of Promax's awards uh, uh, and, and conference. And so that was a, a great transition for me from working in uh, at the three networks in America to moving to the UK and falling right into uh, an organization that I had already been a member of. You've always been at the forefront of things and sometimes on the front line of things as a journalist, uh, but certainly on the forefront of technology and the way that uh, content is um, always evolving and ever changing. And through that, you know, people really look at you almost like a guru of sorts, whether it's marketing or technology, you're always um, I don't know, you seem to have your finger on the pulse, Frank, of anything that's cool, hip. You know, I know that there's a college uh, down in the South, too, that uh, relies on you. Yeah, I, I've always felt that it's important that you don't make a quantum leap, that you go from saying coming out of college to become a producer. You need to have an understanding of your work environment. You need to have the ability to have people who work with you believe that you know 
how to do the job that they do. That's, that's one thing. And the other thing is, <clears throat> I've always felt it's very important to keep on the forefront of the new technology. I started out as a film editor, then I became a tape editor, and then I shot, and then I became an associate producer, and then a writer producer, and then an executive producer, and, and a management uh, executive. So I, I made all of my steps uh, like a, on a ladder, uh, which I think has always been good for me. And even after I left working in the environment of being an employee, so I've always felt that it's important to be on the, uh, to understand what's happening in the real world. So does that mean that it's, you're talking about NFTs or you're talking about cryptocurrency, or you're talking about the metaverse, uh, things that, that, that are on the tip of everybody's tongue in the, in the world of technology and in culture. So consequently, in an effort to continue to maintain a, a position of, of, of knowledge and a knowledge base and be a thought leader, uh, there's a couple of things that I continue to do. So uh, I do a newsletter seven days a week, every single day, um, and it's free. And it's, it's tech-based, it's politics, it's media, it's culture. Uh, and and that's, a, that's, that's something you can get on uh, Review, which is the Twitter newsletter platform. So I do that all the time and it keeps me up to date. It keeps me up to date. I do it every day and it's free to everybody. That's one of the things that I do. I also do a weekly uh, video podcast called The Gilmore Gang. Uh, How which, many years um, has that ha been? How many years now? Because I know, I kind of remember when you started that. Well, The Gilmore Gang is the, uh, I believe, the oldest and longest running video podcast about technology on, on the air today. It, it was started more than 20 years ago by Steve Gilmore, who was an executive at Salesforce. I've been a part of it uh, for the last, I'd say, six or seven years. And since I moved to England, a couple, maybe a year or so before I moved to England, and I continue to do that, and I do that every week, uh, and it's live and live to uh, the, 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 the cloud uh, every Sunday. Uh, I do that all the time. And then I'm on the uh, board of directors, uh, the, the board of advisors, for the Savannah College of Arts and Design uh, film uh, group. The, uh, the television festival that, that, that SCAD has in Atlanta is an absolute and amazing event, and it's once a year. And the film festival, which they have in Savannah, uh, which is also once a year, and I am on the board so that I, I'm able to go to both of those events, and I speak at both of those events all the time. So I will bring uh, any number of, of guests, people who are Oscar nominated uh, uh, art directors to, uh, to this Foley guy that works with Martin Scorsese, to the editor who does all of Robert Rodriguez's films. I bring in lots of really cool people down there and then do presentations and the students and the visitors to the festivals come to these things and ask us questions. And it's one of the things that I enjoy doing more than I'd say just about anything that I do. So I keep doing except that for sort one of thing, thing, and I do a lot of. I was gonna say, except for one thing, Frank, and that's your passion for guitar playing. Guitar playing. <laughs> I, I'd grab. I, I'd reach up here and grab one and bring it down. Yeah, I, I still play uh, uh, all the time. I started playing when I was, I guess, nine, uh, and I've played all my life and um, had the opportunity to play with, with the band that uh, did the original song for your show. Uh, yes, uh, live it up, and that was a, that was a lot of fun, uh, and uh, that was a long time ago. My wife was reminding me today that that was, oh, gosh, that must have been almost ten years ago now. Well, I thank those, you, Frank, so much. Be... Yeah. Well, I thank you <laughs> so pleasure. much, and I hope that you could uh, both you and your wife and uh, your entire extended family can stay cool over there. Um, I don't know. I, maybe you're going to have to sit on a block of ice or something. But um, from oh, for maybe the pond will freeze over. You know, jumping over the pond to you in the UK. But happiness oh, to well, you, my friend. There, there. It's to, tomorrow. It's expected to drop by 30 degrees. So we'll see. Okay. Okay. Maybe bring out the parka. All right. Thanks, Frank. It was great to see you, my friend. Thanks, Donna. Bye bye. Bye bye.